so uh, now we are driving to St. Petersburg a suburb uh, to the place named Razliv. Uh, the museum complex which is located there is a memorial museum dedicated to the episode uh, in the history of uh, uh, the 1917 revolution uh, known as uh, Lenin's last underground period and uh, to the site known uh, as uh, last uh, hiding place of Lenin, последняя подполье Ленина. Uh, the complex includes uh, two museums, two sites, the shed museum and uh, the shelter or the hut museum. Uh, the both uh, are the places where Lenin and his comrade in arms Grigory Zinovev uh, hid in the summer of 1917 to avoid arrest by the counter-revolutionary provisional government. Both locations uh, were turned into museums in Soviet times. Uh, in these museums, uh, I and my collaborator, who is also there uh, with us, um, uh, artist Natasha Krajewska, made the art project uh, a revolutionary museum after ideology commissioned by Manifesto 10 as a part of public program curated by Fiona Barsha. At this side, uh, so to say in situ, I and uh, Natalia uh, will be glad to answer the questions and to tell about the background, background of uh, of the project. Uh, the, the, the project includes uh, two site-specific exhibitions and also a program of lecture tours and discussions. During the manifesto, then we already conducted several tours to the museums. Uh, the first uh, tour uh, at the end, in the end of uh, October, oh, sorry, at the end of June, um, uh, was opened with a lecture by historian researcher uh, Yabudraiskis. And today uh, we are very glad that this guy is with us again and uh, he will give a lecture de ideologization revolutionary museums and their place uh, in the present. Also in July we organized a lecture by Alexander Semyonov, uh, professor of history, co-founder and uh, co-editor of the International Scholarly, Scholarly Journal of Imperio, um, who gave uh, the very interesting comparison of um, crises of 1917 and 2014 uh, in its complex historical historical combination of uh, imperial background and revolution. Another one to, to Rosli last summer was entitled uh, Mimesis and Revolution. The point was the interesting parallels between conspiratorial practices of the professional revolutionaries and some artistic strategies. Uh, uh, perhaps you know there's uh, an ample uh, legend that is well known from the extensive Soviet biographies of Lenin, the so-called Leniniana. Uh, legends about his uh, fantastic impersonations during the period uh, when uh, he hid from provisional government persecution. Uh, the stories about wigs, uh, grease paints, and uh, actors from Finnish working theatre who helped him to impersonate of uh, a peasant or a worker during the period. Um, it is talks not only uh, of the plasticity as uh, one of the qualities of revolutionary, but also mimesis, the mimetic nature of uh, revolution itself, of the uh, mechanism of uh, repetition of revolutions in history. Uh, so, um, today, today's uh, plan is as follows. First, we uh, will visit the Shed Museum, uh, or in Russian, Sarai Museum, or Barn Museum. Uh, there, uh, we will see the permanent exhibition uh, that has fortunately survived almost unchanged since Soviet times. Uh, that shed belonged to Nikolai Emelianov, uh, worker of Sistaresk Armaments Plant, and a member of Bolshevik party. Uh, is a, uh, a suburb, a suburb, uh, small suburb uh, town, and Razliv is a part of this town also. Razliv village is part of Sistaresk. There in the shed, uh, Lenin, um, sorry, in the shed, uh, uh, Nikolai Emelianov, worker Nikolai Emelianov, um, he, Lenin, and his comrade uh, Zinoviev, Grigory Zinoviev, for several days in July of uh, 1970. In the museum you will see uh, also the first part of our project. In a small exhibitional room there is a slide and sound installation which represents uh, say, 
certain commentary to the work of ideology in museum in Soviet times and today also. Um, then we will have a short picnic and after that uh, we will go to the second side, the Shelter Museum or the Hut Museum, named after, after Lenin's and Zinoviev uh, hut uh, that uh, was made uh, 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 by branches, branches or sticks. Like so the Shelter Museum, museum. It's a quite large-scale exhibitional pavilion, uh, which was built in 1964 at the place where in July of 1917 Lenin and Zinoviev lived in, the, in this hut by lakeside in the, in the gaze of the Finnish peasants. It was uh, here that Lenin it was here that Lenin uh, worked on his famous book, uh, also the book uh, The State and Revolution. State and Revolution. A Soviet permanent exhibition by uh, the 60s in the pavilion was uh, really brilliant, progressive, uh, modern exhibitional design in the international minimalist style. Archive, phot archive photographs in the museum's exhibition from the 70s show that it was surprisingly similar to the photos of uh, some European Biennale and uh, it was one of the starting points, uh, by the way, for our project also. Unfortunately, Soviet permanent exhibition was uh, dismantled in uh, 2006. Then, uh, the local businessman, very rich man, sponsored it, built in of the new permanent exhibition that represents, on the one hand, the attempt to transform the museum from ideological, ideological altarpiece or, uh, if you want, uh, spiritual center of uh, Soviet ideological, ideology, one of the spiritual centers, into museum of local story, or local history, sort of uh, a ethnographic, ethnographic museum. And on the other hand, it, it is also attempt to turn it into so-called neutral representation of historical events of 1970. Of course, it raises questions, and uh, this is the theme of uh, Ilya Budraski's lecture. Uh, perhaps Ilya will correct me. Uh, the lecture will be held, uh, by the way, uh, at the pavilion uh, of uh, the Shelton Museum. But before uh, that, uh, we will see the second part of our project, a revolutionary museum after ideology. The exhibition is located in the separate room of the museum nearby the permanent exhibition. That part continues uh, the commentary to the mechanisms of, of uh, ideology in museums in Soviet times and today. And then after Ilya's lecture, we will have time to discussion. Uh, and now, uh, uh, let me remind you briefly some facts from history of the place, uh, the suburb town Sestralesk and the village Razliv, as well as uh, several milestones in the history of uh, 1970. Perhaps historian Lea Budraskis will help me <laughs> also with this task. So, Razliv, uh, it means uh, the fluid waters in English. Uh, the village that is uh, a part of a small suburban town, Sestraresk, is located on the lakeside, Sestraresk, Razliv. Uh, in fact, uh, this lake is artificial. It was formed uh, uh, in consequence of uh, Peter the first uh, the great uh, modernization of Russia in the 20s of uh, 18th century. At the side of uh, Sestra Riva, there was built a big uh, armaments plant and uh, a levy, or how to say in English, dam, uh, to supply the plant uh, mechanical energy from the water mill. Uh, the river flushed and uh, formed an artificial lake now named Razliv. So it is uh, to say the landscape that uh, taken the shape of history of civilization of Russia. Uh, since the end of 19th century, Sestraesk and uh, as an industrial center became also a center of uh, working mo movement. Uh, it is important to keep in mind that uh, the arm uh, plant workers were not uh, a yes to the peasants as it uh, used to be in um, that period in Russia, but uh, already hereditary proletarians. Uh, this is a, a very important 
part of uh, of, uh, of uh, this social social portrait of, of this place, uh, and uh, uh, in the in the side of, of this place, uh, we have mentioned that um, uh, since the end um, of 19th century, it, it is also. Uh, Fashionable uh, gorgeous, uh, fashionable bourgeois resort and <laughs> popular uh, Dasha suburb. Uh, many representatives of Russian intelligence used to live there writers, poets, actors, uh, also artists. Uh, that is Razlif, um, that is uh, social, soci social geographic landscape of the uh, of the uh, last uh, hiding place of Lenin. Uh, and uh, let me remind you what is uh, so called famous last underground period, just briefly. Um, several milestones in 1917. February Revolution, the first of uh, two revolutions to Russia in 1917. Though some historians prefer to consider both as a single revolutionary process, you know, uh, almost a spontaneous revolution without real leadership or formal planning, centered on Petrograd, then the capital of Russia. Economic and social problems were compounded by the impact of uh, World War. Mass strikes, uh, bread riots, uh, uh, strikers were joined on the streets by disaffected soldiers from the city's garrison. Uh, the result uh, of the revolution was the, the abdication of uh, Tsar uh, Nicholas. Um, uh, the provisional government came to power, the members of which were co-opted from deputies of the State Duma, former monarchist parliament, mostly liberals and uh, conservatives. Uh, at the same time, local socialist uh, formed uh, an alternative structure, the Petrograd Soviet, which ruled alongside the provisional government. Uh, the two centers of power both had problems with legitimacy. A very unstable situation that Lenin, by the way, determined a dual power, dual authority. Both the provisional government and socialists from the Petrograd supported the imperialistic war. Lenin, who arrived in Petrograd from Zurich on April, immediately began to undermine the situation, issuing his uh, April thesis. He insisted on an anti-war agenda and the slogan, all power to the Soviets. In fact, uh, in the period, in this context of uh, the imperialistic war, uh, Lenin was the only figure who was against the war. Uh, initially, neither Lenin nor his ideas had widespread support, even among Bolsheviks. Uh, by the way, it's also important for us today uh, in uh, today's political context. Uh, the next milestones are called July Days or July Crisis. The failed attempt uh, of a new revolution influenced by anarchists with participation of Bolsheviks. It is the first time in 1917 the military forces of the provisional government attacked a peaceful demonstration. The government prosecuted Lenin as a German agent and uh, ordered arrest of some uh, other Bolsheviks. Lenin and Zinovev uh, forced war forces to go underground. Perhaps the Yabutrask is presentation is story about the uh, 17 uh, during the election also maybe uh, uh, he, he will add something uh, something <coughs> thank you maybe uh, I will uh, add uh, a bit to uh, to the specific the specificity of, of this uh, historical moment of so-called July days uh, because uh, Ilya already mentioned that uh, despite the fact that uh, in the uh, Soviet uh, historical tradition, there was clear um, uh, division between the so-called February Revolution and October Revolution. Uh, even the Bolsheviks themselves, they preserved the 
1917 as a unique revolutionary uh, process. And uh, for, for example, it's very interesting that even the term the Great October Revolution, which became like canonic, uh, it appeared only in the uh, uh, in middle or late, uh, late uh, 20s. And, and before the definition October uh, Coup uh, was used uh, even by Bolsheviks. So if you read uh, Trotsky, for example, he used the term October Coup. So it means that the, um, uh, the event in October, it was uh, just a uh, moment, ju just, just, just a point, a turning point of the huge revolutionary uh, process. Uh, Ilya already mentioned that uh, this uh, episode in Razlif, it was the last uh, Lenin's underground. But in the same time, uh, it was the, uh, you can say, the first uh, moment when the situation of the civil war somehow appears in, in the in Russian revolutionary events. Because the, uh, if you <coughs> look at the uh, situation uh, in uh, July of 1917, you will see that uh, it was the moment when this dualism of uh, powers, this dualism uh, be between the provisional government and, uh, and the Soviets, it, um, it was forced from below. So it was a huge demonstration in, uh, uh, in uh, Petrograd, which was uh, that, uh, that important moment, which is not uh, exactly peaceful, because it was armed demonstration. And, and there were there were people uh, there, there were people who came with with uh, arms uh, armed soldiers and, and so on and um, uh, the aim of this demonstration it was not just to demand something uh, from provisional government but it was exactly to overthrow the provisional government and uh, uh, give the full power to the uh, Petrograd uh, Soviet. So the situation was that the leadership of Petrograd Soviet didn't want to take the power. And, and the, the uh, specificity of this conflict, it was the, not just a conflict uh, uh, between the provisional government and, and the revolutionary workers and soldiers, but it was also a conflict uh, between um, uh, rank and file uh, activists of Soviets in uh, Petrograd and the leadership of the movement. And uh, Bolsheviks uh, in this situation, they were uh, like in, in between because on one side they were the, the uh, voice of, of this rank and file, uh, the most radical part of the, of the uh, uh, Petrograd uh, revolutionary workers and soldiers. And on the other side, they were a kind of their leadership, which uh, which uh, uh, developed uh, the pressure on the on the official leadership of, of uh, uh, Soviets, uh, which were mostly dominated by uh, by more moderate uh, part of, of uh, Russian socialists at this moment, by uh, <coughs> revolutionary socialists and uh, Mensheviks. So the question for Bolsheviks, it was that this armed demonstration, it was not their own initiative. And they were uh, uh, they were forced in the in the uh, in the situation where they uh, should deny this demonstration, where, when they should uh, call workers with their arms uh, to go home, or uh, lead uh, or lead this demonstration. So th that was the drama of of these days, and uh, in fact they. Um, uh, they uh, choose the, the second way, but in the same time, they clearly explain that there is not the moment uh, for uh, for the overthrow of provisional government, and uh, this uh, uh, attempt of uh, taking power by uh, Soviets will be not uh, successful because there is no support uh, in uh, in the in the country. 
because uh, because this uh, process is uh, mostly uh, mostly uh, limited by uh, Petrograd uh, revolutionary experience. So they understand this uh, opposition, which you can uh, compare with the uh, opposition between the revolutionary Paris Commune uh, in the time of Commune uh, and uh, so-called Versailles uh, friends, which which uh, support the side of contra-revolution. So when this uh, when when this uh, uh, demonstration was confronted uh, confronted by by the uh, contra-revolutionary <coughs> uh, forces, uh, then came uh, and, and uh, the game, the moment when Bolsheviks party, not not just Lenin but all the Bolsheviks party, was oppressed and was uh, uh, somehow uh, became all illegal. Uh, and uh, it was not just a question that uh, there, there, there was this uh, this uh, case, this affair of, of, uh, of the German money and the idea that uh, Lenin and other Bolsheviks leaders, they were uh, German spies, but it was the moment when the contra-revolutionary forces tried to crash the, this um, uh, uh, Bolsheviks party as the, as the revolutionary leadership of itself. So uh, that's uh, that's why uh, this moment uh, was a kind of one of the moments of invariability uh, of, uh, of of the unique revolutionary process of uh, of 1970. And uh, the most important thing that now I, 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 I got to, to finish my commitment. Uh, to your speech uh, that in this moment the future of this revolutionary process was uh, extremely unclear so and, and, the, and the personal future of Lenin and Zinoviev it was it was extremely unclear so if they will arrest it and immediately killed because the, the question was like this so the question was not that they will arrest it and then put it to court and so on but if they will be arrested they will be probably shoot uh, in the in the same moment. Yes. Uh, or they find uh, uh, the, they they find the opportunity to change the situation, or the situation will change itself. And uh, the most uh, uh, the most uh, um, important uh, in this uh, period, because this period of the last Lenin on the ground, it was about about the months. So it was a period between uh, this July days and uh, Kornilov uh, Kornilov uh, coup. So the attempt of the contra-revolutionary coup, which changed the situation uh, rapidly. I don't want to follow uh, too much more into it. Uh, in this next uh, stage of this uh, of this revolutionary history, but ju just want to, to stress this uh, the, this uh, moment when Lenin was in Rostov. It was the moment, uh, a very dramatic moment of the revolutionary uh, process of 1917, and it was a great moment of, of challenge for the Bolsheviks party and for the revolutionary masses. Very much, yeah. And uh, uh, we will be inside uh, in three minutes. And uh, just a short, uh, short preamble to to the exhibition. That you will see. Uh, please pay attention to, to the sound installation. There is uh, quite important part of the project. Um, the installation in the Sarai Museum. So, um, just a problem is there, is there, uh, there is a uh, So, uh, uh, this installation slide and sound installation based around postcards from the late 60s is dedicated the mass rituals of political commemoration that took place at Razlif in Soviet era. One of Lenin's favorite songs, The Workers' Mercy, yes, provided the soundtrack, but it has been assembled in the very special way. 
uh, uh, by Natasha Krajewska and Michael Abreu. Uh, the consonants which support the form of, of the song, song, song's word, song's word, uh, have been removed from the from the chord, from the uh, from the singing, um, leaving only the sublime and inspiring pathos of vowels. So please pay attention to this. We'll have uh, around 15 minutes to to, to uh, uh, examine uh, this exhibition. This exhibition also. Then we will, as as I as I mentioned before, uh, then we will go to.